who's had a big evening, somebody who's had a very special weekend, a big week here in her home country, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, the new AEW Grand Prix Around here, have you a new champ? Hello, champ. It's uh, Scott Felstead, Muslim Fitness. Great to see you back on top where you belong. Yeah. Can you talk to us about your story? Just what an amazing night this must be for you. And also all the kind of physical rehabilitation you'll have had to have gone through yeah. and getting back in the ring. Yeah. So it was a flavour of how you feel. Yeah. I'm not just going to say it just because he's sitting right beside me, but you have no idea how much he's helped me in my comeback and just believing in me and being like, listen, we're going to go look at your neck and we're going to see it and if it's 100% then I'm backing you 100%, you know, and it was and it was just wonderful. And you know, the, he didn't give me this straight away, you know, and I'm thankful for that because we got to tell stories and have fun and do outcasts and it's the most fun I've ever had, like me, Tony and Ruby together. We have a great time and we're enjoying it every single week and we love everything that he's been doing for us and it's just absolutely incredible and I'm appreciative, you know, that I got this moment here in the UK and it's awesome having my whole family here, like, you, you know, got Queen and everything, I was like, bloody hell. But, uh, yeah, it was really, it was just really, really cool and just the process of it, I never thought I was ever going to wrestle again, that was it. They said, you will never wrestle again. WWE cut ties with any kind of doctors and was like, we're not going to check you anymore. So I was kind of in limbo for five years and I never kind of hit rock bottom with it, with no pun intended for the wrestling fans in here, but I never like hit rock bottom with it. I, I kept it a very positive mindset. And so, you know, when I got the call from Tony, he was just like, let's fucking go. Let's try this. Let's, let's go do all the, you know, he, he was like, just, he just seemed so positive and awesome. And I was like, man, I want to kick some ass, you know? And so, yeah, I started training more, getting in the gym. I was working out every single day. I started watching AEW religiously every single day. I was like, this is so cool. And I already wanted to be a part of it so bad. It wasn't started anyway. But um, yeah, it's just been a crazy journey. I never thought I'd be here. I never thought I would be in Wembley Stadium in the biggest crowd in wrestling history. I mean, it's just a dream come true. And I'm so thankful. And thank you, too. So thank, thank you, you, thank you. Congratulations, yeah, Bernie thank Champ. You. Thank you. It's one year in the making thank since you. you came. And also, I want to get back to America. I'm going to start talking some crap. So, <laughs> not on you, on the people. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ray, over here. Let's get a bit of Norfolk love here. How are Hi, you? Hi, Rob. Oh, How are you? you? Yeah. Well, I've got to ask about your family because. Oh, that was yeah. an incredible moment, everyone watched it, and we've had loads of texts into the BBC and whatever you saying, how much everyone was loving it. How good was that to have mum, dad, cousins, nephews, yeah. brothers? Well, they've never, they were never given the opportunity in, in the past to be showcased ever. Like, they were never acknowledged, and I wasn't allowed to acknowledge them until the movie came out, and then it was kind of, I was allowed to. But the thing is, is that Journey, again, didn't even question it. He was just like, let's fucking go. Yeah. Like, yeah, we can have your family. And they, they appreciated it so much. My dad was so emotional. My dad's not a crier. He's a very rough around the edges kind of guy, you know, missing teeth because of all the fighting back in the day, you know, you know how he is. <laughs> but he was crying his eyes out in the ring. It was just such a special moment to be around my family. And yeah, it was, they loved every single second of it. My nephew's in his it still, I think. Is he not? Well, he wasn't here, yeah. <laughs> Ricky Knight Jr. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he's an incredible, incredible wrestler. He just wrestled Zack Sabre Jr. this weekend at Rev Pro. He's going to be the next big thing for sure. Hello. Hi, hi guys. Luca hi. from uh, Ultra Pop Italy. From Italy. Thank hi, you. Italy. Yeah. And my question is for Tony and for Celeria. Uh, Mercedes Money was shown several times during the preview. Is this something, is this a tease, maybe, for a match in the future? I know you have a lot of history. Let me yeah, yeah, I mean, for she's it. not cleared Mercedes Monet, so I think it was great to have her here. She Last she competed for New Japan Pro Wrestling, so I thought it would be uh, excellent to have one of the top international stars in all of pro wrestling here. And uh, the last time we saw Mercedes Monet compete, she was actually competing against Arlen Willow Nightingale. And uh, there's a lot of exciting international pro wrestling, and I thought it would be great to have her here to see all the matches, including the AEW Women's World Championship, but she's not cleared uh, since her injuries. I just thought it would be good to have her take in the show. Uh, definitely a lot of potential things could happen there, and I know uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's had great experiences working with her, and I thought it would be great, given that she's not cleared, but wanted to take in the biggest paid pro wrestling crowd of all time and see what AEW's all about. I thought it would be good for her to be here, 
Uh, but obviously, she's not wrestling or cleared or doing anything uh, anytime soon. But I, I, you know, great to have the top uh, international stars at a top international show, and of course, uh, for the world champion here. Uh, oh, yeah. There's all kinds of people who want to take a shot at you. That's right. Bring on. I, I, I saw her, and I was like, okay, so she's going to be watching. Great. We we already have history, right? So I I wanted to win the championship in front of her, honestly, because <laughs> I know if she ever was to ever come in, she's going to try and get this, right? So I say absolutely bring it on. And Mercedes, if you're watching this, we we can't wait for you to finally join us, if you will. Wow. Right? Very. Thank you. Yeah. Very first challenge. Yeah. Hi, Jack Atkins, Coldaholic.com. Uh, we obviously saw you and Johnny Stone clash in the match tonight. I'm very disappointed in her, yes. And um, Ruby got involved as well, just wondering what is the immediate state of the outcast? Right now, I think once I get back to America, I mean, we have to go straight to Chicago for Dynamite, but right now, she has upset me very much. And if she wants to get back in my good book, she literally has to apologize. She up my feet, she has to kiss the ground that I walk on because she just tried to break my neck in the ring. So, next question. Uh, Jamal and I are here for seconds out. How did it feel to be walking down that ramp, seeing all the phones, seeing everyone cheering your name, mm -hmm. and then to lift the gold at the end of the match? All yeah. the emotions coming out of the whole journey that's led you to that moment. What was that like? Well, for, for some reason, I, I was like thinking of Boomy, right? And it's only because I've, I've been, you know bit naughty back in America with my character with the outcasts and stuff, you know. So I was like, maybe they'll boo me and I can like lean into it, but I got a good reaction. So I'm like, well, I can't really do too much, you know, bad stuff. But it was really amazing. Like, to re you, you don't understand that you're walking down the ramp and just seeing a sea of people and it's just like, it never ends either. You're like, oh my gosh. And the fact that it's Wembley Stadium again in my home country, it's just, it's really, really cool to see because being in Wembley and everyone just assuming we weren't going to do even quarter of it, and within a couple of days, it was over 70,000, it just felt so good. And the fact that we, you know, got over 80, 81, 85. Hey, hey. Well, 81, 80, there were like 90,000 people approximately in the building. It's yeah, it's, it's absolutely bananas. So just like actually trying to take it in, and it's really difficult to take it in as well. You're just like, oh my gosh. It's the most amazing experience of my life, and it's definitely right there in the top of my of my favorite moments and favorite championship 100 percent i'm so excited that is amazing and uh i have to say it was an amazing night i did personally knowing that you were going to be coming out to queen we will yeah. off you yeah, yeah. and knowing that you were coming out with your entire family i was pretty confident that you were not going to get booed tonight yeah, yeah. i was like i hope not jeez coming out tonight i feel like uh, british people can't be disappointed if they hate, hate queen in the crowd that's for sure it was a good one yeah. for sure it was a great idea it was a great idea it was her idea yeah it was, it was, I was like can i get it <laughs> he was like let's do it it was great idea. yeah it's awesome right up here uh, Max Grunman from Headlock in Germany. Um, you've been talking about Rev Pro quite a bit. Um, Ricky Knight Jr. Um, Pack defended his title there. We saw Chris Jericho yesterday attack uh, Will Ospreay at the show. Um, so they have a working relationship with New Japan, as we know. Um, is there any kind of official working relationship between AEW and Rev Pro? And how about the other major promotions in the UK and uh, like Progress or WXR in Germany? I really like Andy a lot and I've attended Rev Pro and I've worked with them and I've tried to feature their clips in the show so I would say yeah we absolutely have a working relationship with Andy and Rev Pro. You know we're both great partners to New Japan Pro Wrestling I believe. Uh, I've attended a lot of Rev Pro even before there was an AEW. I consider Andy a friend and I like to help out my friends in the wrestling business and that means if somebody can make an appearance there and it's not going to affect our schedule or change anything detrimental for AEW, I love working with Rev Pro. And obviously, uh, for Soraya to have family there, for us to have so many people that are part of AEW or people uh, to have a pipeline to AEW, I think it's a great thing. So I support Andy and I've even, when I've had a chance, featured Rev Pro clips in AEW television <laughs> just to show uh, their company off and show some of our stars wrestling for them. So, yeah, I would love to do stuff with Rev Pro, of course. I saw Sky Blue, actually. Got to be a part of the show yesterday, and she got a great reaction. People absolutely adore her, so I was a little jealous, honestly. I was like, I want to do Rev Pro, too. But <laughs> we, were, we were here. Unfortunately, I had to do some Wembley stuff, you know? <laughs> it worked out pretty well, yeah, but that's cool. definitely something to keep an eye on. It's, it, we have a good relationship with them. It's a, it's a good company. I was glad that they had their record weekend. Uh, as part of this huge weekend, the biggest weekend ever in wrestling, and mm -hmm. I was glad to see other people getting the benefit of that. That's nice. And uh, Rep Pro is a great company, absolutely. 
Uh, congratulations Sorry. for both. Uh, I'm Ricardo Chan from Chile, South America. Soraya, you remember that you wrestled in Chile a few years ago? South oh, America? Was <laughs> I, I, think, I think uh, seven years ago. Oh my gosh, that was, yeah, that was, that was well, well, a while back. That was a little bit of a loose cannon. South you know? so so America. I can't even talk about it. Yeah, but yeah, no. Um, we wrestle, I, I wrestle in, I've been very fortunate enough to wrestle in, in a lot of places, so I'm sure Chile was absolutely amazing too. <laughs> yes, we, we have a lot of fun. We have to come back there. Huh? We have to come back there, yeah, sure, right? Yes. We have to. That's my question for, for Tony. And when we can say South America is all in it, I imagine that question. your expansion is going to be in South America that have a lot of fans of wrestling. That's great. But very good question. It's another great market I'd love to visit. You know, we're a company, it's incredible to say AEW Dynamite has not even been on the air for four years yet. The four year anniversary is coming up in a long, it's over a month away. And it's coming up in October, four years of Dynamite. The company itself is not even five years old. And we've already hit some of the all time highs. I think today is the highest high in all of pro wrestling. And also it's a really important milestone in addition to being the record paid attendance in the history of the pro wrestling business. This is our first show ever in Europe, and it was a huge step for us, and we're gonna continue building. Last year we did one week of shows in Canada, we did two shows in Toronto, and we expanded it this year, took another step forward. This year we did a tour, and, and I plan to go back again soon, but we did a run in Canada of eight shows across six cities, and I thought that was a huge step for us from what we did last year, and we'll keep building and building. So that was our first international tour. Today was our first international stadium event, our first show in Europe, and talk about a great way to debut in, not just a new market, but one of the most important markets. And I think that's a great market, Chile. That'd be a great place to go. I've been asked uh, when AEW is gonna visit other uh, potential Latin American countries and markets, such as Mexico and Puerto Rico. I think Chile would be a great market. We have great stars. and. Clearly, you've been there before, and made a huge impression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's great. I remember. <laughs> Hi, this is Tom Slosson for SE Scoops. So first of all, Saray, congratulations on your title win. Yeah, you let's go last. Yeah. Uh, your story is so well documented. Uh, your highs, your lows. Uh, obviously, you got started when you were 13, I believe. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice? As the AEW Women's World Champion, would you give to the 13-year-old who was wrestling a pink Power Ranger in the first match? <laughs> and yeah. what advice do you think that 13-year-old could give the reigning AEW Women's World Champion? Yeah, so I would say you have to have patience in this business because not everything's going to happen for you overnight. But I will say what The Rock told me, which I love his advice that he gave me, and it was to stay humble and stay hungry. You want to be able to stay humble enough for people to want to continue to work with you and you know get good jobs and have it, like end up with a great boss you know but also stay hungry you don't want to ever get complacent and that's something that i never stopped doing so even when i lost my wrestling career completely i never in my head thought it was never going to happen again i constantly was striving to try and get back in the ring whether it was going to take five years, which was great, or 10 or 20 or, or however many years you see me 50 years old and get back in the ring, I was always trying to like get back in there. So yeah, I would say patient, say I'm all hungry and save your money. That's important, save your money. <laughs> Hi, this is Saraya, Mark Ryan from Bodyslam.net. Hi. Uh, you mentioned your cousin Ricky, he has in two matches he had in Paris and Rev Pro. Yeah. You also mentioned your brother Zach, yeah. the year he's had. Is yeah. there any update on him possibly in the States? Good. It was something we definitely talked about uh, that potentially. I think Soraya's family, I'd love to have them involved. They were obviously involved in the show tonight, and she's part of a great wrestling family. It was great to get her family involved in the show. So whether it's here in England or America or anywhere, your family's always welcome, and uh, that's a, you know, it's a good thought. Yeah, awesome, yeah. I just noticed that, is that you know, Zach's going to be coming over in a couple of months, so hopefully we can bring him to a couple of shows and see where it goes. Who yeah. knows, but we're happy for him. I think yeah. it's a very great idea. Yeah, thank you. A few more for Saraya. Yeah. Go on, John. Congratulations on your win. Seamus Dunn, Bonsai in Ireland. Um, so I, my question is short. Are we getting a sequel with fighting with my family? We need a sequel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, there, there, there could be.
be someone in the future. We'll, we'll see. But I will say right now that I am writing a book, and this today was the button on my story. And Tony had no idea about this, but I, I walked up to him in you know the go position, and I was just like, "You have no idea what you just done for me." Because the the I been for a lot obviously and it's been again very well documented and it's been highs and lows and everything like that but I needed something really special and I wasn't gonna let the book go out until something really special happened and so he just completed my book for me and it was just you completed really... your book you did, I did, you did but it for you... <laughs> you're the one who did it. thank you thank you but yes final question I am uh, Steve Herbert for the BBC. I uh, have to admit, I was going to ask that exact same question oh, about yeah. sequels, so it's a great idea, and the book as well. Um, so, uh, to Tony, I just wondered, um, you've obviously announced all in for next year already. Will you be scheduling all out so close to that next year? And how much of a booking headache has it been for you doing both of these shows? I mean, I love wrestling. I think it's a very interesting situation. By the way, I want to make sure you get a good, since they, since he took your question for Soraya, so I'll, I'll, t I'll answer your question, plus we'll get a good Soraya question too, if that's okay. Yeah, thank you, Great. So somebody out there can think of a really good Soraya question on the way out. Uh, and I, this is ridiculous. So much of the case study or why I try to do things is like avoiding some of the other things I've seen other wrestling companies do that, you know, probably didn't help them. I've tried to look at things that have helped wrestling companies, but we should do that and things that haven't. While we haven't always done things perfectly, I do think I try to study history and learn from it. And when you build a great tradition, when you build customer loyalty, and when you put on a great event like this, I, I really strong belief that this would be a great show tonight. I think it's been the best show we've ever done. I think it was the greatest night in the history of the company. It was not only the most successful business night in AEW by far, and I think the most successful business night anyone's ever had in pro wrestling industry. I think it was our best show, and I feel really strong that we should come back and, and reward the market with loyalty instead of like doing shows. Some of our shows do move around, and obviously we hit different markets, but I tried to build traditions. And we have something really special that we did tonight, and that's why this same bank holiday weekend, I want people to know bank holiday weekend, Sunday, Wembley, that's a tradition. In America, a three-day weekend, Labor Day weekend, uh, they have the bank holiday in America next weekend. It's a very unique opportunity as a live event. I don't want to give up that real estate. Now that we've built this here, I don't want to give it up, and I want to keep it going, and I believe we can do it again. And we've had a great tradition of live events in Chicago over Labor Day weekend, and I want to keep that going forever too. And they're both really important dates on the calendar. It creates a unique opportunity to capture buzz around AEW. Well, this is the first time we've done it, but it is something I plan to do in the future. So next year, All In will be on the bank holiday weekend, August 25th, 2024. And yes, I am planning to run in Chicago Labor Day weekend. Next year, I don't have all the specifics yet, but I do want to stay around Chicago for Labor Day, and now I want to come here for the bank holiday because I think these are great traditions, and just like All In can be something special we can do right here. Hopefully it'll stay at Wembley Stadium for a very long time because I love it here, and it's one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, I still can't believe we got to do that in the Royal Box, Carmelo. That was crazy. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, We've done All Out at the Now Arena, where we're going to have Dynamite this week, the home of the original All In. And this year, we'll have All Out at the United Center, which has been a great venue for us since we started doing it. I'm very excited about going there, and we're going to have one of our biggest gates in the history of the company next week. Obviously, tonight has been by far the biggest gate in the history of the company, but there's nothing wrong with a million dollar live house in pro wrestling, and that's what we're looking at next week. So I want to keep that going because that's a pretty special thing too. We're gonna to have over 10,000 people and a million dollar gate next week too, so that's great. And I think we have a great tradition as a live event. Even if I didn't sell a single pay-per-view next week as a live event, we'll make money on, on next week's event. And I expect we're gonna sell a lot of pay-per-views with great matches like Omega versus Takeshita that I just confirmed, and the winner of Wednesday's Penta El Zero Miedo versus Orange Cassidy uh, match challenging John Moxley to defend the AEW International Championship. I think either one of those is a great match. They both have a very legitimate reason to be pissed off and want to fight Mox. And I think either one would be a great match. They're two of the greatest champions in AEW history. Orange Cassidy as the AEW All-Atlantic Champion who leveled up to become the International Champion. And Penta El Zero Miedo to hold the World Tag Team Championship to hold the World Trios Championship could this Wednesday become the first person uh, to, to achieve uh, you know, that milestone of holding those and the International 
uh, championship as you know we've had Orange Cassidy who's been a uh, the international champion we've had Pac who's been uh, the double champ with the international title and the trios title but Pentel Zero Miedo has a chance to achieve something very special this week and I know he wants a piece of Mox in a major way as does Orange I think it's going to be a great show and uh, we've announced other big matches on the card I'm really looking forward to including Miro versus Powerhouse Hobbs uh, Darby Allen taking on the TNT champion Luchasaurus, contrary to popular opinion, Christian Cage is not actually the TNT champion. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be a great event. I'm very excited about All Out, but uh, I'm also very excited about what we built here with All In. And I think, yeah, my plan is to keep doing both events for the long term, keep what we have here in England. We built something very special. I think we've had fans uh, from all over Europe. We've had fans from over 70 countries at today's show. I don't know if you, any of you knew that, but over 70 countries. And, People from all over the world have come to the show, and here in England, from all over England, including a lot of uh, people from Norwich, here to support oh, yeah. Soraya, oh, yeah. and uh, people from all over. So I think it's a really cool thing we built here, but I do want to keep this, and I want to keep what we've done in Chicago. And hopefully uh, that uh, gave somebody time to think of a really good final question for Soraya. <laughs> uh, question for Soraya. Um, you've, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you've only had four singles matches since coming into AEW. So is that something that you'd be looking to do more of now that you've got the World Championship? And how has it been getting the, the rust off since coming back? Yeah, so people said to me, oh, sorry, it's like riding a bike this month. It's absolutely not. When I came back the first time, where it was only a year and a half, it felt like it was like riding a bike. But it was like five long years of not doing anything in the wrestling industry at all. Five long years. I was extremely rusty and the girls were very patient with me, the company was very patient with me, and you know, I was very emotional the first couple of weeks and I just felt like I just wasn't, wasn't doing anything right and I couldn't look at social media because they were cruel, you know, because social media could be very cruel. But then I realized social media is always cruel. But um, yeah, it's just been, it's, I've like lost my train of thought already, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, it's just, it's been, a wild ride, and I can't remember where I was going with it because I'm like a, a, a ADHD, so I'm like, ah. but what was special again? Our singles match. Our singles match, okay. Yes, I would love to do more singles matches, absolutely. I'm the champ now, of yeah. course, I, I kind of have to. But I would, would love to, and the, the reason why, you know, it didn't really make sense for me to be doing singles at one point in time, because you had Ruby do, doing the Owen Hart yeah. trophy, you know, and then you had um, Tony being the champ, and so she was doing her singles matches, and I kind of like being the barricade princess. I thought it suited me very well. Being the screaming banshee on the side of the ring, I enjoyed that. But now he's like, no, now you have to work. I'm like, okay. Well, I guess I have to. I also wanted to, you know, you came off yeah. a very long-term injury, and I think it makes sense sometimes in tag trio situations yeah. where, you know, let's see how this goes, and your partners, if you have a problem, your partners can pick up and, mm -hmm. and help you make it through, yes. and now we've seen, I think you're back. I, I, yeah, 100%. I'm 100%, I feel 100% ready to go. My confidence is fully back where, with my attitude, my character, and again, I'm having so much fun with it that, I mean, I feel like I can go in there and do whatever. It's, sometimes it's the girls that have to hold me back because I want to do 100 million things, and they're just like, we'll take it easy, you know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm ready. I'm 100 ready. The doctor said I was 100%. My neck is at 100%. I asked them, um, when I, when I went there for me, I, is there any way that I can be paralyzed in any way, shape, or form? And he said, no, your neck is perfectly fine. And if you have aches and pains, that's normal when you're a wrestler. But I can take a, a step aside, and, and AEW is really great with their talent. If, if they do, if they are sore or banged up, they're like, take it off and you know bring it back next week or something. So it's, it's really cool to have the support of AEW and Tony, you know, and the support of the women in the locker room, because every single one of them is so amazing, and I, that's one of the best old rooms I've ever been in in my life. And every time I'm there every week, it's always very, very supportive and everyone's genuinely happy for each other, for whatever we do, we're very happy for each other. But yes, I'm ready. Long-winded, but I'm ready for more singles matches. That's great. <laughs> well, I want to congratulate you again. I want to thank you again because uh, 
this was a really special night and a huge part of what made it such a special night is your performance, how hard you fought, that you had your family here, that you had the brilliant idea to ask me to ask for a <laughs> little rock you, and yeah. everything cool. you did to make this possible. Thank you, Soraya, yeah. for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sorry. Thank you guys as well for coming along. I'm probably going to be more mean to you once I get back to America, though. I'm just in my good sights. I'm in England right now. But thank you, Tony. Congratulations. Congratulations.